Hello and welcome to this video on the NUS procedure. My name is Joel Dunning and we're here at the Royal Infirmary with Professor Hans Pielegaard, a world expert on the NUS procedure. This initial video is just showing the setup of the patient and how we drape, exposing uh, the chest laterally either side. Mr. William Walker is also present as the assistant. The NUS procedure is, as you know, designed to repair pectus excavatum. And uh, our thanks goes out to all the patients who gave permission to appear in the video. So the first incision is for the camera port. We need to see inside to just make sure that we can safely place uh, bars underneath the sternum away from the heart. We don't actually have any video of inside, although we just need a gentle quick look inside at each stage. We only use a single lumen tube and we don't even deflate the lungs for long periods. So Professor Pilegaard's marking the intercostal spaces where we intend to place the bars. This is a sizing device. This isn't the actual insert device. We can bend this very easily with our hands just to get the right bend. Professor Pilegaard's pioneered the short bar technique where we use very short bars. I think this is an 11 inch bar is bent into its initial shape uh, using the on-table bending device and then we do a final check on the patient. We also put a place a dot at the end of each uh, side which marks where our skin incisions are going to be ensuring that they're in the perfect position. So this is the first incision on the right hand side of the patient. It's uh, superficial to the muscle so close appeal of the guards just uh, making a pocket outside of the muscle. If you were to go in under the pectoral muscles above the nipple, you would go under the pectoral muscles. This is the insertion device. This is placed through the intercostal muscle. He's already pushed it through the intercostal muscle. And then under vision from the inside, following the back of the sternum, he's pushing it gently round the sternum under guidance. There's a television the other side just out of shot then he's actually feeling and you can show him there see there just feeling the other end of the introducer and then when he feels it's in the correct intercostal space he just pushes up very firmly and then it's very important to actually lift up here so that you don't strip the intercostal muscle off on the other side it's an important point part of uh, which is molding the chest then a tapes just brought through the pre-bent uh, bar, this is the implant, uh, is placed in the chest, obviously put in upside down and then using a device, then we just bend this a little bit just to get the bend perfect, it's easier to do this before it's flipped, and then we take the flipper and just simply turn it around. And you can already see that the pectus excavatum has improved greatly. Now in this patient it was decided to do two bars, uh, the deeper part of the pectus is actually much easier to get round once you place the higher bar. If you have very severe pectuses, you'll place a high bar first to make the second one easier. And again, the second one's a bit easier. Again, modelling the chest to to reduce flaring inferior to the pectus, and the procedure is repeated, placing a tape, and then a pre-bent bar. I didn't show you uh, the bit where we bent this again same as before and then this is flipped again into place. The bars are only stabilized on one side that's a stabilizer plate just going in and uh, is always placed on the left hand side. This reduces the chance that it'll twist although they do embed very firmly uh, in about six months. There's also further bending on the left so that that stabilizer device doesn't slip off and there's a second safety uh, technique. He places a wire just distal to that stabilizing plate which will stop it slipping off. So we don't leave any drains in the chest, we just place this 16 French uh, Redivac drain temporarily. We inflate with five of PEEP by the anaesthetist, pressing on the chest. We actually do this for about five minutes and when nothing else bubbles out uh, we just take the drain out and there are very low incidences of pneumothoraces. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.